For this question, we've been asked to identify the monomers used to construct this polymer, nylon 6-6. Now, for those of you guys who are new to this kind of thing, which might be most of my undergraduate students, when you see this structure drawn this way, it might be a little bit confusing. You might be wondering, what does that really mean? What it means is that what you have occurring is this pattern occurring over and over and over and over in both directions for hundreds and maybe even thousands of units in length. So let me see if I can redraw that. So you can imagine, for example, what I've got is I've got this carbon here, double bonded in oxygen, stuck to four CH2s in a row, and that's sort of an abbreviated way of saying there's a CH2, 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 four CH2s in a row, stuck to another one of these carbons, then it's bonded to this NH right here, stuck to six CH2s in a row, stuck to another NH, and then the pattern repeats itself. I've got a carbon stuck to there, stuck to four CH2s, stuck to another carbon, uh, double bonded oxygen, stuck to an NH, stuck to what, six CH2s, and then over here I've got an NH stuck to six CH2s, and that's sort of what's happening. So this is the shorthand way of basically just saying, here's what you've got. You have this thing happening over and over and over and over again. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> so as I've uh, delineated in an earlier video, the monomers that are used to construct nylons are a diamine, and I wrote down in the earlier video that what you have is an NH2 with an R, in, or two NH2s, sorry, with an R in between it. And you react that with a diacid chloride, like that. The, uh, this is a generic way of uh, describing the way of synthesizing a nylon. These R's here are written, like I say, generically, and they can vary depending on what the nylon is you're trying to construct. In this particular example, the R between the two nitrogens is this. This is our R, and between these two carbon-oxygen double bonds, this is our R. Hopefully that makes sense. So I've got this R between these two nitrogens, and this R between these two carbon-oxygen double bonds. So, I've got my two nitrogens. I'll go ahead and write my NH2. Sorry, uh, for the confusion, I can write the H2 on the other side. And instead of writing an R here, for this specific example, I'm going to write CH2, and there are six of them, and then I've got another NH2 there. And then over here, I've got my chlorine stuck to my carbon-oxygen double bond, and the R here is going to be CH4, or sorry, CH2-4, that's what I meant to say, and, uh, and that. So it's a diacid chloride reacted with a diamine. So if you did react these two molecules together, what would happen is the individual nitrogen, nitrogen on one side, would displace the chlorine from this diacid chlorine, or diacid chloride, and take its place. The nitrogen on the other side would, would displace another chlorine from another molecule of this, and then another diamine would do the same on both sides, and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, for you know, thousands and, uh, or hundreds or maybe thousands of, of different repeats, and that would give us our final nylon. So this is the final answer. These are the two monomers that you would need for this question. This problem is the same kind of question, except we're given a different polymer, polyethylene terephthalate. I have to tell you, I love seeing words that have a PH followed by a TH immediately after it, just because it makes for some interesting pronunciation issues when I say terephthalate. Terephthalate. <laughs> Suffer and suck attach. Anyway, just like I said before, uh, with the example of the nylon, this repeating pattern, or, or this structure, is intended to show you basically this. I've got this carbon-oxygen double bond. It's got this ring in between it, which is called a benzene ring. And then I've got two CH2s, stuck to an oxygen, and then the pattern repeats. I've got my ring, and then I've got oxygen stuck to two CH2s, and then it goes on and on and on and on for potentially hundreds if not thousands of repeats. This section of the polymer uh, is this section of the polymer drawn up here, and this, these sections here and here are this section. So basically you can just see it repeating with this A here, and then B here, and then a again, and then another B tacked on on that side, and then B tacked on this side, and then another A over here, and then et cetera, et cetera, off <clears throat> into infinity and beyond. So the uh, individual monomers that are used to construct this are uh, very analogous to nylons, where I've got an amine and a diacid chloride, or a diamine and a diacid chloride. These are a diol. So a diol is just like a diamine, except instead of having two NH2s, I have two OHs. So I'm going to take a diamine, that, or sorry, a diol that looks exactly like 
this part A, except I put hydrogens on the ends of the oxygens, and then I react that with a diacid chloride. Diacid chloride is going to look like building block B, except I've placed chlorines under the ends of these carbons that are doubly bonded to oxygens. So if I took this molecule and this molecule and reacted them together, they would polymerize to form polyethylene terephthalate. Those are the two monomers that I would use to make this polymer.